Welcome to HB Kids. I'm Pastor JL, and this month we are in a series called Block Party. Yes, everyone is invited. Our life app this month is Friendship, using your words and actions to show others you care. Now, here's the thing we've been talking about these life apps, but what is a life app? Well, friends, I'm glad you asked. And if you didn't ask, I'm glad you asked. So a life app is what God wants to do in us so that we can change the world around us. So what God wants to do in us so we can change the world around us. So think about that whenever we say our life app. So like, for example, friendship, friendship. What can God do in us with friendship to change the world around us? And then again, friendship is using your words and actions to show others that you care. So with that, how can we change the world around us? Pretty cool, huh? And then our memory verse this month comes from Proverbs 17, 17, and it says, a friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. We're gonna talk about friendship today, which is really exciting. But before we do, let's go ahead and pray. Lord Jesus, we wanna thank you so much for this day. And God, we thank you that you are here with us even now, even on this video, Lord, because you're that awesome and that sovereign and that magnificent. And we wanna thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, friends. All right, we're going to sing a new song called, let me make sure that I know what it's called, called Friend Like You. And it's talking about how God is our friend. Jesus is the best friend that we could ever have. So let's stand up together and let's sing. Once you get it, go ahead and sing along. Jesus, you have been so faithful. You with me in the darkest valley You with me on the mountain top I'm thankful that you never leave me And that your love will never stop Help me to be who you've been to me To everyone I see Let us love one another Question, have you ever tried to do something by yourself and then you later realize, mm, this would have been a whole lot easier and I would have been way more successful if I had someone to help? Oh, that was a very, very long question. But have you ever been in that situation? 
I definitely have. The first thing that comes to mind, which I shared with you guys this story before, but I'll share it again, was when I was trying to put tables away. So we had a party here at Kid Venture, and we had some tables in the hangar, and I was like, oh, we're good, I'll put the tables away. So some people, they rolled the tables onto the little table rolling rack thing, and I'm like, I can do this. So late at night in the dark, mm -hmm, I decided it was a good idea for me to roll this giant cart of like, seven, eight, nine, ten, I don't know how many tables along the back alley of the church <laughs> over to the NPR where they were stored. As I'm going, I later realize that, wait a minute, I'm going uphill and there's a slight slope. So now I'm like, ah, like pushing these tables up. Um, and then I had to get them around this like sidewalk thing Mm. So I tried to get it around the sidewalk by myself. It was it was not good. And then I tried to get it through the door, which it came from in the beginning. But it would not go back through that door. And I said, really? So then I had to wheel it out. And as I'm trying to make my way to get to the front of the church now, after I went all the way around it with all of these tables at night in the dark, by myself, mm, bad idea. Um, then some of my friends, they, they pulled up and they're like, Jail, do you need help? And I said, yes, I do. So my friend Max jumped out of the car and he's like, let me help you. And I said, please, <laughs> you know, why do we do that to ourselves, you guys, when there's something we need help with or, you know, we don't wanna ask for help. There are those situations or times where, it's like, you know, I would be a whole lot more successful if I had somebody helping me. But we don't like to ask for help or we might even think that, you know, life would just be easier without people. Have you ever thought about that? Right? I definitely am guilty. I've thought of that. And then I've, you know, been like, wait a minute, I do need people. Um, but, but living on our own, just by ourselves, like an island, is that really the best way to live life? No. No, I mean, sure, it'd be easier sometimes. Sure, it would. But I feel that it would have a negative effect on us. You know, we're actually not the first people to wonder about these questions about friendship. The Bible is full of people who wrote about what it means to have friends and why having friends is so important. But not just friends that you're like, yeah, they're my friend, but you're like, I don't even know like their last name, but yeah, they're my friend. Friendship, really true friends, getting to really know people. So let's take a look at the book of Ecclesiastes. That's a book we don't go to often. Ecclesiastes, and we're gonna be in chapter four today. So Ecclesiastes was written by King Solomon. You might be thinking, wait, he sounds kind of familiar, but who is he? So King Solomon was King David's son. And so I'm sure you've heard of King David, you know, David and Goliath, King David, right? So King David had a son named Solomon. King Solomon was known as one of the wisest people. In fact, King Solomon wrote most of the book of Proverbs. And the book of Proverbs is full of words of wisdom. So great. And there are 31 chapters in Proverbs. My dad, he's always said, a proverb a day keeps the devil away. My dad's just cool like that, so that's what he said. But you can actually take the book of Proverbs and read one chapter a day if you want, because it's kind of broken up, uh, you know, between the days of the month. So that's that's just something fun for you to do. Um, but anyway, back to Ecclesiastes. So Ecclesiastes, it's believed that Solomon wrote this book in the later um, years of his life. And so this was after, you know, he learned a lot of really, I mean, really hard lessons. And so he put a lot of his words of wisdom into the book of Ecclesiastes. And so let's see what Solomon, King Solomon has to say. Let's see what he says about life and if it would be easier to live life on our own or if we should live life together. Let's take a look. Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine and 10, or verses nine and 10, says two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. 
Suppose, so he's given an example now, suppose either of them falls down. Then the one can help the other one up. But suppose a person falls down and doesn't have anyone to help them up. Then feel sorry for that person. Yeah, really, right? I mean, so Solomon says that two people are better than one. Why? Well, in Solomon's example, he says one, one of the friends has fallen down and the other person came and, you know, lifted them back up. So I want you to think about a time <clears throat> when a friend helped you. Maybe, maybe they literally helped you get up when you fell. Um, or maybe, you know, maybe you were that friend who helped somebody. So I want you to think about a time, think about a time when a friend helped you. You know, I have a friend who helps me all the time. And you know this friend too, my friend, Mr. Bruce. Mr. Bruce all the time helps me. Like I can't even tell you guys the number of times that I've called up Mr. Bruce and been like, hey, I need your help. Or better yet, Mr. Bruce calls me because he knows who I am. And he's like, Pastor JL, you need help. And I'm like, yeah, I do though. See, that's, that's when you know you have a good friend, when your friend can call you and they can recognize that you need help. So I encourage you, be that friend to somebody too. All right, let's take a look at verse 12. So verse 12, the first part of it says, one person could be overpowered, but two people can stand up for themselves. Wow. So Solomon, with that first part, first part that we saw with verses 9 through 10, what we saw there is that friends help each other. So that's the first thing we learned. Friends help each other. And then the first part, part of verse 12, we learn our second thing, which is friends stand up for each other. How? Well, let's think about it. What ways have you needed a friend to stand up with you before? Have you ever needed a friend to stand up for you? I mean, I've needed friends to stand up for me before too. You know, you ever have a time where people are talking bad about you and then you have a friend who knows you and they know your character and so they stand up for you? That's me. You know, I've had friends stand up for me too, which is really awesome. So maybe you can be that friend in somebody's life where you see something that's going on. Maybe you have some friends who are being mean to another friend and you can stand up for that friend and really help them know that they are not alone. So first thing we learn, friends help each other. Second thing we learn, friends stand up for each other. And the third thing, let's take a look at the rest of verse 12. It says, and a rope made out of three cords isn't easily broken. Wait a minute, we're talking about people and then Solomon changes it to ropes? Let's talk about ropes. I happen to have one. I may or may not have put that there. Okay, so let's talk about a rope, guys. So ropes, what is it about a rope that makes it so strong? Well, it's the cords. As you can see, this rope is braided, right? There are different cords that are all together. And the cords add strength. So, you know, it's great for you and a friend to have a good relationship, totally. But you know what makes that relationship even stronger? God. God makes that relationship even stronger. See, friends, that's the third thing we're learning, friends trust God together. You know, lots of people, they, they think that when Solomon is talking about a rope, you know, that isn't easily broken, he's actually talking about God. And how God, in the midst of, of the you know, relationships, so you have you, know, you, your friend, and God, that's what makes it strong. So we'll go back to my friend, Mr. Bruce, right? Mr. Bruce and me, yeah, we're friends. But when we have, we have God in the middle of our relationship, too, of our friendship. So with that, we're even stronger. You get what I'm saying? See, that's what's cool about this. So there are times, here, we'll put, we'll put the rope back right there. You know, there, there are times in life when we can be tempted to go at life alone. We might think, you know what, it's just easier if I just do this by myself, right? I'll just, I'll handle it, I'm fine, I don't need anybody. Um, but God made us for relationship, and He made us first for relationship with Him. 
And then secondly, he made us for relationship with each other. So I wanna actually pause right now, take a time out and ask you today, do you have a relationship with God? Do you have that friendship with God? And if your answer is yes, then praise God, I'm so excited for you. And I want that relationship with God to get even stronger. But if your answer is no, then I want to offer you the opportunity today. I want to give you the choice to say, yes, I want a relationship with God today. So if that's you, I want to pray with you. Would you repeat this prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, today I want a relationship with you. I want to be friends with you. And I want to live my life for you. Will you show me what that looks like? And will you forgive me for all the wrong things I've done and help me to live for you? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, friend. That's so cool. So see, we want to first have a relationship with God and then we can have a relationship with each other. And then our relationships, well, it'll be like this rope. It'll be a whole lot stronger, right? You know, think about these three statements that we made today, right? What was the first one? Friends help each other. Friends stand up for each other. And third, friends trust God together. Do the people you surround yourself with most help you? stand with you and trust God with you? And can the same be said about you? Do you help your friends? Do you stand with them? Do you trust God with them? You know, our friendships have a huge influence in our lives. You know, like this rope, we are binding ourselves to people. I know that's like kind of scary, right? So let's bind ourselves to the right kind of people to people who will help us stand up for us and trust God together with us. But also let's be the right kind of person too. Let's be that right kind of friend. Be that person who will, what is it? Help others, stand up for each other and trust God together. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I wanna thank you for my friends today. God, I wanna thank you, Lord, that we will be the kind of friends that you have called us to be, Lord Jesus, that we will help each other, stand up for each other, and we will most importantly, trust you, God, together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, friends. We want to hear from you. We want to know what God is doing in your life and in you and through you and all of that. So make sure to comment on this YouTube video. Send us an email at hbkids at highervisionchurch.com and join us on our Zoom call. We want to know what's happening and remember every day with God is an adventure. So let's live God's adventures together and stay tuned for our friends at the so-and-so show. All right, bye guys. All right, John, are you ready for the tug of war? Oh, I'm ready, Brandon. On your mark, get set, go! go. How, how is this helping us to learn how to do the tug of war? It's not, it's not, something's wrong. We need to be both pulling on the same rope. Oh, yes, of course. <sighs> Let's try this again. Yeah. Star wipe. <laughs> on your mark, get set. Go. <clears throat> oh, man, this isn't how a tug of war works either. No? No. We should be on opposite sides of the rope. Otherwise, it's just going to be. <clears throat> <clears throat> That was unusual. I'm okay. Hello everyone, my name is Brandon. I'm John. And this is The So-and-So Show, a show where me and my best friend try to have some fun, we learn something, <laughs> we do... You okay, do you need a lozenge? No, I'm fine, please. Continue. All right. 
Anyway, it's the show where me and my best friend, we try and learn something. What are you doing? Why are you making that noise? You want me to stop talking? No, it's, no, it's, no. no. Just... This is a show where me and my best friend, what is the matter? Why do you keep crying when I say best friend? Are you? It's just that we've been best friends for a long time now, right? So long. Well, the thing is, I've got a new best friend. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, we can still be friends without being best friends. I mean, we're around each other all the time. It makes sense that we could use a break once in a while. But, but, Believe me, I get it. But I don't... Who is this new best friend anyway? Tell me everything. Okay. So I was walking through the store the other day, mm -hmm. and I hear this voice out of the blue. Hi. So I turned around, and I said, hi, back. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not every day that you meet people who are just plain old friendly, right? So you have to... Anyway, before you know it, we got to talking. And you wouldn't believe how smart she is. I mean, she knows something about everything. We were in the store talking for like hours. The manager said it, I had to leave or make a purchase. And uh, next thing you know, we're walking out of the store together. <laughs> We've been best friends ever since. Well, that's awesome. When do I get to meet her? Oh, oh, she's here. Oh, she is? Yeah. Well, in that case, please welcome someone who knows everything. Is she coming? What? Oh, through the door? Oh, no, no, of course not. No, no. I don't understand. Besides, she's please. already here. Brandon, allow me to introduce Sylvia. Ah. Say hello, Sylvia. Hello, Sylvia. <laughs> she slays me. That's a great joke. Hey, John, you know your best friend can't be a robot voice in a box, right? <laughs> Jealous. No. Of course it can. Look at all the fun times we've had together already. Hey, Sylvia, play the friendship montage. Playing friendship montage. John, this thing is not your friend. Jeez. It's a box that you found in. It's a box, all right? And, it, and it's just like every other box in the store. That's not true. It is. That is not true. She has answers to all my questions. We have the same taste in music. We, we know okay, where look, I like it, to all eat. All it does is repeat facts from the internet and play generated playlists. No, so she also knows what the weather is going to be like. How does she know that? It's, 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 it's a computer. It's a, it can only give you facts, right? It can't give you, it can't help you like a, a real friend can. You know, like, like a, what's a problem that you're having right now? Anything, tell me. Okay, okay. Well, you know my neighbor. Longbeard Carl? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, well, he keeps blocking my driveway. He's got like six cars for no reason and like, it just keeps frustrating me. Okay, well, um, as your friend who is actually listening to your problems, I suggest that you go to Longbeard Carl and you tell him what's bothering you. <laughs> uh-huh. What do you think, Sylvia? Searching for tow truck companies. Oh, come on. You are not going to call a tow truck and tow Longbeard Carl's car without talking no, to No, I him. know, I know. But I'm just saying Sylvia heard the problem and came up with a possibly good solution. The tow truck is on its way. No, no. Cancel the tow truck. Cancel the tow truck. Tow truck canceled. She was just trying to be helpful. Uh huh. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys. Hi, Kellen. Now ordering nine melons. No, oh, no, 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 not melons. Kellen, no, cancel the melon order. Cancel the melon order. Canceling melons. Whoa! You guys found one of the new Sylvia's? You know, sometimes it seems like she found me. He thinks it's his new best friend. Oh, she's way more than a friend. She can do this. Sylvia, go disco mode. Disco mode engaged. 
Sylvia, stop. No, no, don't listen to him, Sylvia. Uh, uh, go crazy bananas. Ordering 80 bananas. <laughs> what is it with you and produce? No, cancel the banana order. Canceling bananas. You got a story for us, Kellen? I do. And speaking of produce, here's Count Lupe and Mr. Fritter. Count Lupe and Mr. Fritter are the best of friends, as you may know, but sometimes they don't make the wisest choices. So here's a little wisdom from the book of Ecclesiastes to help them out. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Did you hear that, Count Lupe? Two are better than one. What perfect timing. We can help each other get to the bottom of these stairs. Ho oh, ho ho, who needs help? Last one down is in properly aged fromage. Ooh, ooh. Oh, ah, yay, ah, ooh. Count Lupe, you fell. Oh, crack, ooh. oh, crack, yeah, ooh. I'll be happy to help you traverse the dangerous staircase, Mr. Fritter. I have brought a pillow. Oh, thank you, Perry. You are a good friend. Um, yeah. The verses continue. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Suppose either of them falls down. Then the one can help the other one up. But suppose a person falls down and doesn't have anyone to help them up. Then feel sorry for that person. I couldn't have made it safely without you, Perry. And I could not have made it safely without you, Mr. Fritter. I could not make it to the hospital without either of you. Help! Friends are there to help each other. And when we mess up or when we fall down, friends can help us get back up. But Ecclesiastes has even more wisdom for us. <clears throat> One person could be overpowered, but two people can stand up for themselves. And a rope made out of three cords isn't easily broken. It's very crowded in here, Perry. I hope we'll be safe. We will be safe, Mr. Fritter, as long as we stick together. There's strength in numbers. You're right, Perry. You're so right. Hey, where's Count Lupe anyway? <laughs> Hello, you two! <laughs> I hope, hope, hope you are enjoying being packed in like cans of sardines while I have all the space in the world! <laughs> are you sure it's safe up there alone, Count Lupe? We can make room for you down here if you'd like. <laughs> Never! Besides, I am not all alone. There are two bags of uh, frozen green p p peas here to, to, to keep me c c company. Oh, Count Lupe, those peas have been there for years. I wouldn't mess with them if I were you. <laughs> Nonsense. It is they who should not m m mess with m m m me. Count Lupe, look out! Oh, no. Yeah, that was silly. But the point is, a friend is there for you when you need help. They give you advice. They stand up for you when you're in trouble. It's good to have a friend. Isn't that right, Count Lupe? We. Oui. Oui. Back to you guys. Thank you, Kellen. That was a good lesson. Mm -hmm. It was very uh, fruitful. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Yeah. Hey, do you get why this thing can't be your friend now? I mean, it's not going to give you advice. It's not going to stand up for you when you're in trouble. Uh, okay, okay. You're right. But it is good for one thing. Sylvia? Reveal the question. Thank you, Sylvia. The question of the day is, what makes someone a good friend? Someone who listens and cares? Yeah, someone who knows a little more than just how to do an internet search. Hmm. Yeah. Brandon, will you be my best friend again? Of course! Ah! <laughs> Sorry, Sylvia. I'm going to go ahead and shut you down, all right? Yep. What are you doing, John? My mind is going. 
Daisy, Daisy, give your answer, do. So talk about it together. Uh, what makes someone a good friend? And we'll see you next time on the So and So Show. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Ah. <laughs> How long are these stairs? <laughs> That's too much, man. That's amazing. <laughs>